got going, Matt? Oh, uh, we're gonna change the ignition coil on it. Excellent. Good. Get it for you. Of course, inside this car is a 350 cubic inch Chevy small block V8, which obviously doesn't belong in the car, but it's here anyway. And Matthew has the HEI style distributor, which means the ignition coil is right underneath this cover. So Matt, what you're going to have to do is change out that ignition coil. It's pretty easy, but there's a little bit of understanding how that comes apart before you just go ahead and slam the coil in. It's pretty simple. Let's yeah. go ahead and get started. We'll do. All right, Mac, go ahead and take the cover off. I'll do. Looks like it's just those three bolts. They don't come all the way out usually. Okay. They're captured in the casting of the plastic. Okay. A little bit rusted on top from when your brother didn't have a hood on a car for a long time. Yeah, I didn't want to mess with it using a screwdriver and stripping them. So I figured get the right socket. Good idea. Ooh, that one did come out. Okay, just grab the cap and lift. There you go, now you see your coil and the wires that go to it. So now what you got to do, Matt, is come over here where the wires are mm -hmm. and then unplug the wires. But you have to remember where they were plugged in so you can put them back in the way that they came out. Okay, black there. On this side. The wires plug in from the bottom. Oh, okay. All right, Matt, I have better light on the subject now. These wires right here, these wires right here you have to take off. They come down like a... There used to be a factory plug there, but obviously it's just kind of ghetto rigged. So just pull it down and then make it work. Do. Red on the right side, well, back of the car, green to the front, and then the plug here goes in the back. Yeah, that goes to the actual reluctor inside the distributor. Usually there's a tab on each side to pull apart mm -hmm. and then push down. There it is. All right, kid, open up your new box there. See what all came in it. Came with new bolt, a washer, a uh, plastic washer of some kind, and then a metal bracket, and then the wires that are. Wires are attached to the contacts that go into the distributor itself. Hold still. Yep, right there. Those are the contacts. So remember the, those wires you just unplugged? Those are the contacts. You're going to replace the contacts. They're hardwired right to the coil. All right, now you see these bolts here, 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 and here around the perimeter? Yep. Go ahead and take those off. And that black one, it's a ground, you see, to the coil itself. Yep. So make sure you just hook that up the same. set the bolts somewhere I don't know if you're gonna reuse them or not I don't know if you want me to either. do they come with new ones yes it did these ones do not they're they're bolts they don't have a they're not screws these ones are screws the new ones are bolts I will right, well, probably put the new ones in then bolts are usually better less chance of stripping them 
All right, so now what you do is just lift out the coil and the wires, the way they, the clips come out of there. They just, will they come out easier? Or do yeah, I they just it? slide right out. They okay. just held in my plastic. I don't know if I need a screwdriver. I no. get a needle nose to slide them out. Just lift them straight up. That's it. The other one comes out with the coil, I think. You can see the other one kind of goes around to that ground strap right there. Yep. You see that little plastic to hold it up straight, just like you got it. All right, now see what happens is, remember the distributor has a rotor that spins inside the cap? Mm -hmm. The center of that rotor rubs on that black nub in the center that's like a spring-loaded piece. And there's that insulator. See, it's kind of like that foamy like material. This? Not foamy, like a rubbery material. Mm -hmm. It's an insulator. So the other one will attach exactly like that. So your new, your new coil comes with all of that hardware already. So go ahead and open up your new coil and put it together as you see. You don't need that new button to come with it. It comes with a button. No, I, it does not come with a new button. No? No. Okay. Surprise, that, that surprises me. Maybe the button comes with the distributor cap itself and the rotor. All right, well, then we use the old one. It's the coil that failed, not the hardware. So that just goes on there like that? Yeah, just, then, just same as the other one. And then it gets put, just push in? Yep. Does the button get held down or does it not get held the button, down until it goes The button's in? like a spring. Okay. This we could replace. Yeah, you put that new one in there too. most annoying things about Chevy's and you don't experience that because your hood is forward hinging is you're leaning right over where the hood hinge would be oh. so you'd have to lay over your engine to work on them that's the most annoying thing about Chevy engines okay, with the distributor in the rear yeah you just luck out because of the way your car is built sweet Perhaps put the button and that rubber in the distributor first. That's what I was thinking too. See, because there's a recess in there. It's hard to see with the light. I'm not going to be used. I'm not going to use the new ones. They're different threads. Oh, the new ones are uh, coarse. The old ones are fine. All right, well, we use the old ones then. That's fine. We're going to be replacing this anyway eventually with a aftermarket ignition system, which is better than this factory stuff you're using. But even this cheap factory stuff will work for what you're doing right now. Over the winter, we might be doing a lot more work on this car to actually get it a lot faster. Come spring season next year, of course, that is dependent upon money and the rest of the channels and how we're doing and how busy we are. Next spring, you'll be looking at high school graduation, so 
not sure what the racing future for us is, but we'll see. Now, Matt, I don't know why they call this style of distributor HEI, meaning high energy ignition. Maybe because it's like a direct fire right into the distributor. Uh, maybe because it's a direct fire right into the distributor cap as opposed to having a separate short lead coming from your coil to the center wire. But this is commonly called HEI, so now you know. Okay. This is very really similar to the white Cadillac, just slightly different because it's a Cadillac. Yeah. But basically, it's the same style and type of distributor. Heck, it might even be the same coil for all I know. Yeah. I did not want him to go in the holes. <clears throat> in a way. Okay. I think I have to bend those ones oddly enough. Well, probably, yeah. Because these ones are at an angle. They have to be more... At, at their, they have to be more at 90 instead of the... Slight angle they're at. Oh well, I guess the Chinese slaves forgot how to do that. I don't know. Maybe that is maybe maybe that part is American made. Who knows? It'd be nice, but I doubt it. Like you got it. I think so too. There. Yeah, so I can see the bottom. All right, I just make sure the wires don't get pinched. Put your cover back on. Oh, I threw out that bolt, didn't I? Did you throw it out? Yeah, I did. I'll just put two out of three. I forgot, I thought a new one would come with it. Oh. Just put the side two on there. You would think with the price of the coil, they would throw a couple extra pieces of hardware in there. Like what's going to cost them a quarter of a cent to give you two little bolts? Alright, now you gotta do is put the wires back on. Where is that made anyway? 
Well, it ain't Chinesium. Hencho in Mexico. There you go. That's just as bad as Chinesium. Alright, hook your wires up. Remember the big plug was in the inside. Yep. One is power and the other is your tachometer is what that is, if you remember. Oh, okay. <clears throat> in the front. Red to the rear. Most likely the red is power. Pretty sure that is based on its location. And the back clip is on. And it should be ready to fire. Yep. Clear off the roof of your car and then kick it over. Now while Matt clears the car off, I should bring up a couple of points. Now you might be asking yourself, why do we do this? Well, when we had the car out drag racing the last time, we noticed that it stumbled. It had some issues with stumbling. Sometimes it did, sometimes it didn't. I was assuming fuel, carburation issue. However, as my father used to always tell me when I was a kid, as soon as you think fuel, look at ignition. We didn't do that. We were thinking fuel and stayed with it. But what was there to adjust on the ignition? We did mess with the timing. We have it just before it starts to ping or detonate, or my dad used to call pre-detonate because after all, detonation is what it always does normally. But when Matt went to go take the car for a drive, just for a nice little Sunday drive, it was hot out and the engine got warm and then it stumbled and it barely made it back. Once it cooled off, it fired right up again. So I told him, hey, I think your coil is going out on you. So we just parked a car, went on vacation, got busy with some other stuff. And while we were gone, we picked up a new coil. So now we're finally putting it in. So that's why we're putting the coil in now. So Matt, without further ado, go ahead and fire it up. See what it does. Give her a little bit of a rip once it, you know, war let it warm up a little. Give her a little bit of a rip, but you know, don't be uh, being stupid right in front of the shop. Just run around the building a little bit. Alright. You know what I mean? Now will you warm it up before you put it on the street? Yeah.
made hand gestures to him. He didn't see it. I only did it four times. Walk out to the road. Just don't get crazy. up there's an issue with it just drove it a little bit here on the property and you can see how she stumbles and gives me some crap so Matt if you could try to focus more on the tack I'm trying to simulate a launch at the track so if you run up to about 1500 and then launch you can hear it stumble before it goes And then, like Matt said, it will kill itself. Neutral. But if you give it throttle slower, she launches pretty decent. I think it's a mix of a handful of other problems, not just the coil. But the coil was failing for sure. So this is going to be a continuation. We're going to have to address this problem. I was thinking about upgrading his distributor, upgrading the ignition coil, 
possibly carburetor replacement. I'm not sure. We got to figure out how we want to play this out. But ultimately, that's not the problem with the stumbling in the car's inability to launch effectively and reliably, and most important, consistently. We're going to have to deal with that. For now, it's not going to break down on you and stumble and let you go take whoever you want to take out for a ride. So, you know, hot car, you got to have some girlies to go with it. So with that, let's get and just end this video right here. We'll deal with this in the future. Check us out again. Obviously, again, hit that like, subscribe, the whole nine yards. Find out what we're going to do with Shaka here in the future. With that, we're out of here.